and you discuss net refrigeration effect, refer to page 380 of the, um, of the reference guide. It's better if the number, is it better if the number is higher or lower? Do you have any problems to discuss how to choose the best refrigeration? I guess refrigerant there um, from that chart, or could you provide some? So yes, we can take a look at the chart, but before we do that, let's just define it in terms of the pH diagram. Okay, so one thing I'm not gonna love about this annotating is I want straight lines sometimes. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> you guys get to watch me learn how to doodle. This is great. All right, so on a pH diagram, I think we all kind of, by this point, have a good sense of what that refrigeration cycle looks like. But let's draw compression process from one to two, and then condense from two to three, expand from three to four, and then evaporator from four to one. So the refrigeration effect is the part of the process where we have Q in. But it's not the same as QN, because QN, QN is BTUs per hour, but it's not energy per unit time, it's energy per unit mass. So we would define QN or Q net, sometimes it's called, or Q of the evaporator, if you want to be as flexible as possible, as the mass flow rate of refrigerant times the difference in enthalpy between state one and state four, H1 minus H4. That is the um, that is the Q in or Q for evaporator, but the refrigeration effect is just this part. So if the whole thing has units of BTU per hour, then this refrigeration effect has units of BTU per pound because the mass flow rate is going to be pounds per hour. So what does that mean in terms of this question, like picking from a table, what refrigerant is quote unquote better than another refrigerant? Well, what do we mean by better? We'll talk about that in a minute, but we're saying that a refrigerant with a larger refrigeration effect has a larger difference in enthalpy between state one and state four, which means for one lap around the track, right? For one loop around the cycle, it's gonna do, it's gonna remove more energy, right? It's gonna remove more heat than another refrigerant that has a smaller refrigeration effect. So all other things being equal, uh, a larger refrigeration effect just means a larger distance from one to four. And I presume if you were to get a question to ask which one's better, you want the one with a larger number, but that's pretty speculative because you could have a refrigerant with a smaller refrigeration effect and just increase the mass flow rate. Right, and move more refrigerant around that cycle. And if there's no reason why you can't do that, then you know that would be an equal way to get the job done. Ultimately, the system has to meet the um, the Q in. It has to remove a specific amount of, of heat, and that's how it's going to be designed. So let's tab over to the reference handbook now.